Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, uh, Kathy. Here we are, uh, Monday, no, beginning of November. How about that? Uh, good morning. I can't believe it's November oh, already. This man. It's gone so fast. <laughs> uh, it goes fast. Uh, and this year's going fast. And we're having mm-hmm. fun uh, doing the podcast. We are. And, We've been working, uh, processing, uh, discerning God's will. I've been in a long time. Right. Uh, there's lots to say about it, and we wanted to walk everybody through it, you know, piece by piece, and understand the truth of it. Uh, we're gonna, we're kind of in the this final week here of this uh, series. Uh, we're going to uh, kind of encapsulate everything and summarize and get into a little, little of the practical issues of how to do it and. Uh, and then open that up, you know, hopefully for everybody to to keep uh, pursuing. And uh, mm-hmm. again, we want we do want to say, and let me uh, actually put this up here. Um, uh, we have on our website, um, we have, uh, it's uh, afjministry.com, afjministry.com. And you can go to online school. And in that school... Uh, is a course uh, that is discerning God's will. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've covered a lot of it, you know, on the podcast, but uh, it's really helpful, you know, particularly uh, since you might have skipped some or uh, only seen a piece of it, is to go back and actually enlist in the course, take you take you through the whole thing. You're going to join basically us walking through all right. that material together with assignments. There's a workbook uh, that has all the detail to it. So, uh, you know, if, if this has been interesting to you and you want to learn in more mm-hmm. depth how to do it is go, go, go take that course. Um, and then again, we always have the opportunity that people can email us and say, OK, I've got something specific. You know, could you could you mm-hmm. give me some insight on that, which we're happy to do? We want it. We want to be right. available to help you. Uh, and that's one of the things, by the way, this is where the community that we've talked about and we'll, we'll uh, mm-hmm. help in our summary talk about it even more. But. God gave us a process. Mm-hmm. And one of the processes is use each other and the Holy Spirit that's with each other to process my will, confirm my will, check my mm-hmm. will, uh, and understand my will. Uh, and, and as you know, Kathy, that's what we do in our leader group is that we, we're that community and we have right. our... We have and our, it's such our, a blessing. We have our own personal inner circle. We've learned to do that with our spouses and as you're as you're looking at discerning God's will, uh, one of the things is to begin to put a community around yourself. If you have a heart to to uh, each of you, individually and corporately, how do you follow God's will? Yeah. And it's a, it's such a beautiful thing, and we really yeah. urge you to do this. So you could be doing that with your friends or with your spouse or with your inner circle. Yeah, I would actually encourage um, anybody who hasn't gone through the abide, you know, online, that core, the core course abiding in the vine. Um, And especially if you don't have that community, gather a handful of friends who have a heart to go. Mm. I mean, if you've heard this on the podcast and it's interesting to you and you're learning and grappling with it, some um, get a, get a handful of other couples around you and go ahead as a small group and do that abiding course. And then you can, you can go straight into the discerning God's will one after that even. But I think, you know, there is an urgency, I believe, to building that community. If you don't have an abiding community around you, there are resources to to begin to build that. And I think God will honor that. So I would definitely, I'd, I'd grab some friends and start doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I think that's a great uh, uh, encouragement to us is that, you know, you and your spouse, you and a group of friends, a small mm-hmm. group, uh, go start with abiding, uh, learn how to yeah. learn how to hear from God and then how to go into discerning God's will or in the other ones. Um, and um, uh, with uh, that's how we do retreats again, is if you have a, a group, 
and you want to put it together and head, do a physical retreat, uh, we have leaders around the country that can assist you in that. So right. uh, we want to make it available. We believe God's call uh, mm -hmm. is really simple for what we do, and that is get people into the Word of God, yeah. <laughs> teach them to hear my voice, <laughs> right. Uh, right, and enjoy my walk because I'm going to bless them to make them a blessing. And mm -hmm. life is getting trickier and trickier and trickier. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually, uh, uh, if you didn't catch our, our podcast last Friday, uh, we talked about the deception yeah, uh, and how, how could believers be deceived to wind up following the beast and not even see it as the beast. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a false prophet who encourages, who's someone who's a Christian that encourages us to do that. And most believers do. Uh, and what right. we believe is the key is, well, um, we don't per se have anything to say you should. Rather, we say we encourage you get to get into the let us help you get in the word, mm -hmm. learn to abide, get connected to the vine, which is an absolute truth. Apart from me, you can do nothing is what Christ says. Um, let me learn, teach you how to abide. Let me teach you how to go to unity with your spouse, with a friend. And then let, let me start giving you uh, clarity about God, my will, because it's going to get mm -hmm. tricky uh, down, right. the, down the path. And the issues, the problems, the things that we face, he doesn't leave us and say, well, that's the way life is. He said, let me uh, redeem you, restore you now in your current life, by the way, while life gets trickier and trickier. So mm -hmm. uh, we really encourage you to take advantage of it. The resources Absolutely. are there. Absolutely, uh, they make it. We make it available for you, and we'd really love for you to uh, to spend that time doing it. And we're always open to facilitate that. Um, mm -hmm. We've talked about uh, God's will last week when we ended it last Wednesday. Um, we we were discussing Joshua uh, as mm -hmm. the example of someone that such a good example. Yeah, yeah. had learned. You know, uh, what have you got to say to your servant? I'll follow you. I know the promise you're giving me. You're going to take it step by step. Mm -hmm. uh, we, he learned the hard way. <laughs> uh, it's a good idea to keep following him. Uh, right. Don't say, I got it. Um, I know what I'm going to do now. Isn't this a good idea? And they had great failure, and he had to get retaught. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, son, uh, uh, you got to follow me, and you got to listen to what I say. You got to ask me every step of the way. And if I, if I give you an assignment, a, a, a what we call instruction, you got to be faithful to that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't, you stop the process. Uh, right. So you're, you're going to go back to the world and the struggle of the world and the, uh, the consequences of the world without God's protection because I, no, I can't guide you anymore and I can't deliver to you my will, my promise, my beautiful life, my covenant, I'm going to bless you to make you a blessing unless mm -hmm. you're with me. <laughs> so right, right. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting, really. Uh, so we've talked about that. Joshua is a great example. And, uh, and he, he learned it and followed it and got a great victory. And uh, it wound up, by the way, at the end of the book of Joshua, which was, you know, probably a decade or so, uh, he, they, they had conquered the promised land. All the enemy was defeated. They occupied it. And it said there was great peace in the mm. land. The shalom was in the That's land. All, all the promises were there because in Joshua, you know, he's getting ready to move on into eternity. And he gathers everybody together and says, we've experienced this fantastic will of God. Mm -hmm. How beautiful is this? Right. And then he says this, uh, you got to keep doing that. Mm. Keep following his will. Uh, right. Don't think, okay, we made it. Right. Now we'll take back over. Nope. He says, you got to keep doing it. And he says, um, uh, I set before you, you have to choose who you're going to follow. Mm -hmm. When? Every day. Right. He says now. And if, truly every moment by moment. Every moment you know, by there, moment. There's moment by moment. Every surrender. hour, every moment. As, you know, mm -hmm. Do you have a heart to follow God? And um, he says, if you follow God, mm -hmm. you will continue to receive his promises and this blessed life will be yours. If you mm -hmm. choose not to follow God, you're going to lose everything that we've, uh, we've received. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's up to you to follow God step by step by step. 
uh, and you got to stay with him. And then he makes a statement. This is in uh, Joshua 24. As for me and my house, I said, mm-hmm. I, I can't, I can't uh, guarantee what you're going to do, and I can't force you to do what you're going to do. But as far as me and my house, we will what? what does it serve say? the Lord. We're, we we're going to follow God. We're following yeah. God. Me and my house, we're going to follow God. Uh, and it's a choice. Uh, mm-hmm. Is do I have a heart to abide? Do I have a heart to follow? Do I have a heart to hear, receive God's will, Mm -hmm. knowing that he is leading me to the very, very best? He has the power to deliver to me the very, very best. And his heart is to give me that very, very best. Why would, why would I not, right. you know, do well, that? That reminds me again, I, I shared last time that passage that I had read um, that said something to the effect of doing my own will on my own power is humanism. Yeah. Doing my own will on God's power is religion, but doing Christ's will on Christ's power, that's abundant life. Yeah. Yeah. And so you see, you can, you know, that, that portrays pretty, pretty nicely kind of the three possibilities, you know, right? is that, um, well, you just decide to do what you're going to do and you're just doing it on your own power and you're doing it without God and it's not going to work mm-hmm. out well. Uh, two is that you're religious. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm attempting to uh, appear to follow what God says, but I'm still doing it on my own power. Mm-hmm. Now it's mechanical. And interesting enough, you're actually in boat one number one. You're, you're, right. st- you're still, you're still going to have negative consequences Exactly. And, and, and there's nothing that God can do or, well, let's follow God completely right. and let God fulfill his will in my life as I'm going to be a follower, not a doer. And as we do, he says, you'll ex- receive, live out the beautiful life that I can. And by the way, in the world, you're going to have what? Trouble. Trouble. D- difficulty. Uh, uh, you got self-centered people coming against you. You got the enemy coming against you. Mm-hmm. You got a, a world that's already destructive of things that are going to happen. We just, I just had a, <laughs> um, uh, one of our leaders uh, on the on the East Coast, uh, and and you and I were there last week. Yep. Uh, we're enjoying his boat, Scott and uh, Kristen Cornell. Um, in New Hampshire on Lake Winnipesaukee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's uh, a beautiful boat. <laughs> beautiful boat. Uh, it's uh, from 1955. Mm-hmm. A Chris Graf, uh, Beautiful boat. Um, and Wooden, just beautiful woodwork uh, on we, it. We yeah. went on a ride on it, and I got the, because I grew up, <laughs> I grew up with a Chris Craft. Actually, the boat that I grew up in was actually uh, newer than that one. Oh, yeah. Uh, isn't that funny? Uh, but it and it was it, I it was a ski boat. It was, you know, I learned how to how to water ski and and how to you know do all kinds of cool stuff. And I drove that boat as a kid. And so you know, Scott said, "Hey, do you want to drive the boat?" You know, yeah, I'd love to. Well, this brings back all these memories and mm-hmm. uh, how beautiful it is. And we had this beautiful time around the uh, sitting around the lake. And uh, even I know you had to go because you your assignment was for your daughter Anna, but uh, we got to see the sunset. We still and, got the nice afternoon, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we beautiful. Well, I get a phone call from Scott. Uh, he says, and he sends me a picture. I uh, actually text. He said, mm. "Yeah, uh, uh, we had some adversity. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> um, our boat sank. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that beautiful boat that you and I were physically there last week. Right, right. Sank." <laughs> Uh, and he shows me the picture of the boat sank in the dock, in the, at the dock. dock. Uh, what happened? Well, uh, we had a storm that came up that had four to five foot waves, and it evidently uh, overwhelmed the Which boat. Which is crazy for Lake Winnipesaukee, yeah, by the way. And, and particularly, they're right by the shore. Right. Uh, so they have a dock, and they're right by the shore. And okay, yeah, the waves are there. He said, we've never experienced this. Right. By the way, everybody on the lake did. Uh, but it swamped it, <laughs> and it sank uh, mm-hmm. right there at the dock. Uh, and it was like, oh, my gosh, you know, look at that. Uh, and we talked about it, you know, is that, well, in the world, you're going to have what? Trouble. Trouble. <laughs> well, you got it, you know. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we prayed about, okay, I got to let God restore this, and what do I do now? And he, he said to get, uh, <laughs> uh, it's called the boat extraction team. Yeah, which he actually sounded like he was fascinated. He by was the fascinated. Process. He said, actually, I kind of liked watching this, you know, and, uh, a boat extraction team comes mm-hmm. and they, they're divers and they put, they put, uh, 
uh, uh, air airbags and lift it up, and then they got to drain it, and there was mm. a hole in it because of the rock, and uh, it was it was something. Uh, and so his their their heart was okay. Uh, in the world, they're going to have trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> they they were not expecting their boat to be sinking uh, this week and the and the like. And they're by the way leading a retreat coming up this weekend, so right. uh, uh, it would be typical of things that happen uh, before the retreats, mm -hmm. but. Um, okay, I have it, uh, and they we've learned, and they they shared this that well. Okay, Father, what do you got to say about this? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll restore it. I'll show you how to do it. The boat will be fine. Uh, it won't be as there's not as much damage as you think. Um, and actually, I would like you to have joy while I do that because mm -hmm. lead and let me lead and guide you of who to get how they can do it, who's, who, who should restore it so that they do it right. And by the way, it's not going to cost you much if you get the right people. This is all part of God's will that, well, okay, you mm -hmm. got trouble. Let me, let me resolve it so that, and, and uh, he'll show me a picture again. And, and uh, uh, the lake's getting ready to freeze anyway, so he, wouldn't, he was going to take it out uh, now. He'll take it out, get it fixed. And then next spring, I said, send me the picture. When that boat is sitting on the top of the water, <laughs> uh, ready to, ready to take out again, yes, and and demonstrate that God restored it, you know, and mm. by restoring it again, it's not <laughs> uh, okay, God, um, you know, it's your boat, you restore it. Let me know when you do. <laughs> he says, <laughs> no, "Well, he's going to give him step by step I'm gonna, process, I'm gonna right?" Tell you, and yes, it's going to cost you some money, and but I'll I'll make it up to you. But I'd like you to have joy. Mm -hmm. through the difficulty of of this thing that just happened. Why? Well, because you're part of the world. Mm -hmm. I didn't exempt you from it. And I didn't say, okay, I'm not going to have you be impacted by the general adversity of these waves. But in that, I can now guide you, lead you into the resolution. So that mm -hmm. uh, as people, usually when they're coming to me uh, and Linda, they're saying, I'm in trouble. You know, I've got a problem. Mm -hmm. I'm really mad, or this happened, or my financial situation, or my boat just sank, and uh, man, that's a, that's hard. And I was just uh, got to do other things. I don't have time for this. You, you can you can imagine how it goes. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, well, okay. Uh, I understand. Uh, I guarantee you that God can resolve this, hundred mm -hmm. percent, and bring you to joy, peace, freedom, restoration. It's going, to look, it's going to be the Garden of Eden, uh, elements mm -hmm. of the Garden of Eden in your life. Are you, do you have a heart to go? Right. Uh, and again, a lot of people, because we talked about this last time, they have a false understanding that, well, doesn't everything that happens is God's will? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a Christian, so everything that happens is God's will. And if that's true, and I had this awful thing happen to me, why are you telling me that God's going to restore this? Mm. Well, you don't quite understand it. <laughs> right. Uh, not everything that happens is God's will. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. But remember, you said the prayer is, thy kingdom come, thy what? Thy will be done. Thy will be done. You got to ask for it. So by definition, it's not automatic. Mm -hmm. And we're in a world that is under the control of Satan. And it's kill, steal, and destroy, entropy, Boats are going to get swamped. Um, mm -hmm. You know, things are going to fall apart. Uh, difficult things are going to happen to you. Uh, what you need is God's will for him to guide you, lead you. For here, Here's what I'm going to do for you and give you. Uh, just like you said to Joshua, hey, uh, I'm going to give you the promised land. Mm -hmm. Follow me into it step by step by step. And I will deliver it to you. Uh, and by the way, I, we just said that Joshua said... Uh, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Interesting enough, he makes a statement before that in chapter 23. Hey, by the way, everybody, not one single word that God has told us has uh, been uh, unfulfilled. He's fulfilled mm, oh, every, every single thing he said. Do, yeah. you, do you recognize? He said, do you recognize mm. that? Oh, yeah. Well, then if I was you... Keep following God's will. Why? Well, because his word, his plan is going to be fulfilled and it's going to be fantastic. Mm 
Uh, and that's why I can guarantee to somebody, you know, do you have a heart to go uh, and right. receive it? I think it's interesting, even you know, going back to the example of Scott and his boat right now, um, when we were talking this morning and he was sharing how, like he said, it was such a joy, actually, he was enjoying yeah. watching the restoration process. And isn't that a true representation of what we, you know, as God is in the restoration process in our lives and in our circumstances, when we are walking with him and surrendering to him, that restoration process is even a joy. And I just think there's such beautiful parallels in that. I yeah. love that. Yeah, now think about that. And we actually have that, he has a picture of that boat. In a sense, the boat, you know, is damaged. Right. You know, uh, I'm watching it start to be restored. Mm -hmm. Why? It, what about that? Think about that. What about that that brings joy? Watching it come back to what it was designed to be. But, you know, and that's what God does in our lives. He is restoring us to what he designed us to be. Because the, as you look at it, you looked at that boat. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's ruined. Yeah. Um, we would like it to be restored. Mm -hmm. We still want to enjoy the boat. Uh, is that possible? Yes. Okay, how? Well, the first thing is get this extraction team and, and you got to get it so it's out of the water. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, so that you can go to step two, step three, step four. Right. Uh, to get it restored so that all he's watching is the first step. Right. Okay, now what, what's the encouragement as he watches that, the first step? What's that encouragement to him? What does he now begin to realize? He now begins to see that the restoration will occur. It's step gonna by step by step, but it is going to happen. It's going to happen. You're starting to see it happen. Mm -hmm. Not with, well, we got it out of the water, and it's and uh, it's going to be miserable still. Right. No, it's like, wow, look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, that step was taken. Uh, I can now uh, get excited. It's going to happen. Hey, mm -hmm. this is going to happen. What? It's going to be fully restored to the beautiful thing that God has planned for them by what? I'm watching the mm -hmm. restoration process. Yes. And why? Well, it's encouraging. And then that's why Scott, and Scott expressed it really, and, Kurt, and Kristen really well, is that, uh, hey, interesting enough, he said, I actually <laughs> enjoyed right. this awful thing that happened. I kind of enjoyed the restoration process. Yeah. Uh, and it'll really be fun to see when they replace the boards and get the engine working properly. And by the way, it's already been uh, shown. They've already let us know. Hey, you know what? Um, it's not as bad as it could have been. Mm -hmm. I believe already there was God's favor. Mm. Uh, is that, Beautiful. Is that, yeah, your engine could be completely destroyed. And you're mm -hmm. going to have to buy a whole new one or get this. And they said, yeah, you know what? Uh, yeah, it sank. Yeah, the water damaged the engine, but eh, you know what? It's not too bad. We can fix it. Um, mm, and, and that statement is what gives you encouragement. Hey, right. hey, guess what? We can fix it. That's why when people come to me with these troubles and I say to them, I guarantee you God will resolve it. He's going to fix this. Mm -hmm. It will happen. Well, the, if they embrace any of that, okay, well, <laughs> all right. I'm willing to try and go. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because they're encouraged that, is it really possible that God can fix this, that God can restore mm -hmm. this, that God can uh, resolve it? And we know, because it's happened to us, uh, yes. Uh, why? Right. Because he says it's absolute. That's why I've come. To, and that's the mm -hmm. good news, the good news of the gospel. So um, as we uh, you know, process that, uh, we want to go into kind of this this week, kind of summarizing a few things. Uh, we talked about this a little bit last week, but is there an interesting truth that is part of this process? So, Kathy, if you'd read uh, Hebrews 10, uh, 33 to 39. Uh, Hebrews 10, 33 to 39. Okay. Um, but recall the former days when after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings sometimes being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. 
for you had compassion on those in prison and you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property since you knew that you yourselves had a better possession and an abiding one. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward for you have the need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised for yet a little while and the coming one will come and will not delay but my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. Okay. Uh, so he kind of he kind of lays it in there. He says, yeah, you know, that world's trouble. You got trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, God can uh, give you uh, his promises of what he wants to do to restore it. And he makes this interesting statement. He says, first of all, don't throw away your confidence, boldness. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's already discussed this, remember, back in uh, earlier in 10, uh, uh, chapter uh, 10, 19 to 25, is what's the confidence? Well, you can march in mm -hmm. to the throne room and have a authentic discussion of of what we've really laid out by what Joshua learned is when you go into the throne room mm -hmm. and you're talking now to the Father <clears throat> through the Son in the Holy Spirit, the question, <laughs> the question that you are to have fundamentally is what? As you go what do you into, have to say? What yeah. is your will about this? What do you yeah. have to say? What do you, what's your will? about this and I'm coming in with boldness on mm -hmm. a couple levels one um, I have a confidence that because I've come in you're going to answer me right that you will speak and I'll hear you yeah. will speak and I'll hear it um, and I have that I have that confidence uh, two is that um, I can confidently express the issue Mm -hmm. I can talk to you about the problem. I can talk to you about my decision that I'm facing. I can talk to you about what do I do now about this. And I can tell you how I feel about that. Mm -hmm. Which can be, man, I got a problem. Particularly as you're learning this, you, you walk in and you say, <laughs> I, I'm miserable. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm very unhappy. I'm angry. I was just talking to a couple uh, about something that happened in their life and uh, and they're abiders, mm -hmm. but they said, "We're kind of right now. We're kind of angry yeah. about, about something." Okay. Um, and what God says is this: Don't you go try to fix your anger and then come and see me? Mm -hmm. Why don't you just come on in? Right. I know. I already know you're angry. Why don't you share with me why? What What's going on? What happened? Right. What do you you know? And He says the confidence is, I can march in. Mm -hmm. knowing you're going to answer that um, I can share with you my heart, my emotion, my feeling, my understanding, what's going on, uh, and the issue I got. Mm -hmm. um, and then three is that he says, I'm going to pay you to stay here with me until what? You receive my answer. And then mm -hmm. this is really cool because it ends with the statement that, no, we, we don't shrink back. We, we live by faith. What's faith? believing mm -hmm. what he says is going to happen. Right. Um, his, that's called his promise. Here's what I'm going to do, God speaking. And see, as we summarize this uh, God's will this week, I hope we can have it clear when we say, what is your will? Mm -hmm. The question primarily is, God, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. What's your promise? What is it that you're delivering me to? And then, then there is instruction for me, which I have a heart to follow. Right. So, for example, we talked about Joshua. Mm -hmm. Did Joshua say, well, I think I'll attack a few cities and see what happens? Not at all. <laughs> okay, why did he even go in and, and start going city by city? Why did he even do that? Because God instructed him to first, he laid out the promise for him of what he was going to do. And then he gave him step-by-step -step instruction on how to walk with him into that promise. Yeah. So and he's that, he, that intimacy with him. The reason he even went 
is God said, well, I, God speaking, I'm going to give you the promised land. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deliver to you the covenant, blessed to be a blessing. Um, I'm mm -hmm. going to give that to you. That's my promise. Uh, that's what he heard. Okay, why would he even go in the first place? Well, because he understood that. Right, and believed it. And believed it. Uh, by the way, and we have this exact uh, example of this. Uh, God had offered that 40 years before that. Right. Why didn't they get to go? They chose not to. They didn't, they didn't believe when they hit the hurdle of things looking difficult. They backed, backpedaled from it. They chose not to step in. Yeah, see, they said we're not willing mm -hmm. to go to faith and let you persuade us that what you have to say is true. We've decided it's too difficult for us. We're not mm -hmm. going. We heard the promise. By the way, most people don't even hear that. It's like, I don't, I don't even right. know what you're talking about hearing God's promises. What is that? Uh, that's what abiding is all about, by the way, is to help mm -hmm. you to understand how to hear that. Um, but uh, they said, we're not willing to go. And so because you're not willing to go, you've thwarted my mm -hmm. will. What was my will, God speaking? I'm giving you the promised land. But mm -hmm. you never made it because you weren't willing to go with me for me to deliver it to you. Uh, but Joshua and Caleb said what? We believe it. If you say so, we will. Yeah, we, we believe, believe it. it. So based You're upon, us based upon that, in faith, I'm moving forward mm -hmm. knowing that you're going to lead me and guide me step by step. And then he says in the verse you just read, there's no pleasure by God mm -hmm. in, what, in what he called shrinking back. Right. Okay, what, what does it mean to shrink back? Um, to, to go back to self, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that I, I, I'm not willing to follow you mm -hmm. into your promise. I've decided I know better or I'm not willing mm -hmm. to go that way. I'm going to try to figure this out myself. Yeah. Or I've let fear overcome my faith. Right. And I shrink back from I that. I, I just back. don't see how it's possible. Therefore, yeah. I shrink back. Yeah. And the key word is just back is that, well, you just... Mm -hmm. You stop and you go back to, I'm going to take over. Mm -hmm. And he said, God says, I have no pleasure in that because the just shall live by faith. By faith, yeah. Uh, that's the only way it can happen because it's a spiritual process. And how does that look? Well, you got to get my will. How does that look? Mm -hmm. You got to speak something to me. The promise that mm -hmm. I then have the heart to go into. And then he, and then he says this. Um, we, we, we can understand that dynamic. And he says... <laughs> After you have done my will, mm -hmm. you receive the promise. Right. Okay. Now, when he says, after you've done my will, he's talking about the instruction. Mm. Here's my instruction. I've got to get you to the right place at the right time with the right people so that I can deliver what I'm going to do of my promise for you to have this issue fulfilled, to have this decision made, to have this uh, problem overcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to speak it, and then you have to walk into it. And how do you walk into it? Instruction. Mm -hmm. And then he says that this, after you've done my instruction, I'm going to fulfill the promise. Mm. Uh, you, shared a, you shared a great story uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, that kind of illustrates this. You said you and Dan, a while ago, were uh, being asked by God to tithe. Mm -hmm. um, and you yeah, said... Yeah, early in our marriage, yeah, that he laid that out. Yeah. He, he laid that out. Uh, and you knew some promises associated with that. By the way, it, uh, it's in Malachi chapter 3, mm -hmm. uh, verse 10. Uh, it says, if you... If you uh, actually, you can test me in this. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, he said, don't ever test me on anything else, but this one you can. If you are faithful in, 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 in this a concept of first fruits and mm -hmm. um, everything that I give you, you the just, beautiful principle. You just yeah. give it right back to me and I'm going to bless you even more. And he said, your mm -hmm. barns will be full, uh, which means that, again, it's not about building wealth. It's about the place that you're at will be a place of contentment. It'll be a place mm -hmm. of not struggling financially. Uh, it's not about, about building wealth. It's that you have freedom. Um, right. And then it goes on to verse 12 and says, hey, by the way, 
Satan isn't going to steal it from you. That's kind of, mm. that's kind of an important element. That's of, an important element, it's yes. Not a, it's not an up and down thing. It doesn't mean that you, you might have, and Paul says that I've learned to be content in bounty and not bounty, but right. um, Satan isn't stealing my life because of it. Um, mm -hmm. And God says, you know, he's not going to be able to steal it. Okay, so you were presented with that, and he gave you a promise, and you mm -hmm. said you said you struggled with it. Um, yeah, which is the way it goes. Uh, trying to understand God's will, how did you process that through, so that we can then illustrate this principle of after you did the promise, or after you did my will, you you received the promise. How did you right. how did you process that through that struggle to the point where okay. We'll be, we'll be obedient to that instruction. How did right. that work for you? So again, this is, this is early in our marriage. So we didn't have the foundation of abiding per se, but, but we're walking with God and listening to him. And we had built a foundation of, of trusting him. And so he knew where we were at. So I just, I want to emphasize that he knows where your faith is starting at this very moment, if you're listening, um, and he's going to meet you in that place and continue to grow it and stretch it and everything. But, um, he knew that. And my, our heart was, we want to do what God has to say. Um, but you know, me being the numbers gal, you know, this is, you know, prior math teacher. And I'm all about, <laughs> I can, I can run a budget to the penny. Yeah. I am never off. I, in fact, I, I actually, I'm such a geek. I love to run a budget to the penny. I'm not going to let it go if I can't find where it went. Um, so that being said, yeah, you know, I'm looking at us second lieutenant salary, right? Coming out of, of college and not a lot there and going, how does this add up? God, Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're going to have to help me here because I see the numbers. I know the numbers and yet, um, and we just committed at that point. Okay. What we do know of God is that is he, he is faithful to his word. And so well, I don't fully understand. And I can't say in that moment, I had um, a complete heart for wanting to do that. I knew enough of his character to say, I'm going to trust you with this. And so we're going to step out and we're going to do this and then continue to pray, God, I need you to bring my heart along. And what he did in that process was not like even overnight. Um, I think I've shared some of this before but he took us on a journey. We were faithful to continue tithing. And then he was faithful to show us, um, I'm going to, I'm going to do such a work in your heart to show you, there is no way you can possibly outgive me. It's not even just the tithe. You can't give more than I'm going to fulfill. And it's, and just trust me with this. And he did things, you know, crazy things I've shared on here before about times we got a, a refund. He told us to give, um, to a, a family, a pastor friend of ours who just laid on our heart a certain amount. And we literally sent a check, did that. And the next day got a check in the mail from, from, oh no, I'm sorry. We got the check first on this occasion. There's been times it's gone the other way around, which is fun too. But on this particular occasion, we got a check in the mail that we weren't expecting a refund from our insurance. And both of us were like, we're supposed to send that to this friend. And we did. And it was the exact amount that they were short for this dental bill they had for their daughter. And they had no, no idea how they were going to pay it. So even in that, he's like, okay, you take the step first and I'm going to grow your faith. You're going to see this happen. And then, and he would do it time and time again, so much so, and incrementally more as we journeyed along that now we don't bat an eye. If he says, do it, we do it. And even me being the numbers gal, just knows, okay, he, he is in this. And if we're both hearing it and we're in confirmed with him, we can trust it fully, but he grew that. And he took it step-by-step step in a way that brought our heart in alignment with his, but initially and multiple times along the way, there were times he put us in an uncomfortable position that we had to actually step back and say, do we believe this is true? Do we? And yes, we do. So we're stepping with you and he grew our heart in alignment with his and then delivered the promise. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, again, as you're looking at, it, it's always by faith, by definition. Mm -hmm. So I have to believe what God has to say, which is his promise to us. And, um, and that's a great example. And I've worked with others in the same uh, scenario is the thought is, well, after you deliver the promise, mm -hmm. I'll tithe. Right. Because generally when we're faced with this, and Lynn and I were in that same position when we first learned this, is God says, well, I'm, I'm teaching you tithing. 
Trust mm-hmm. me. Yeah, but um, my budget doesn't have room for that. <laughs> it doesn't make sense on paper. It doesn't make sense because if I do, that means I have to stop paying other things, and that doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, God says, well, I can't work it any other way. You're going to have to follow me. I've given you a promise. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I reinforce that promise. And by the way, it's going to be true. You are going to have to take the step of faith of fulfilling my instruction to you. When you do, you'll receive the promise. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I can't work it the other way around. I can't let you be God and say, well, you, you, you do this and this and this, and then I'll follow. Yeah, you have to follow me first. So he mm-hmm. says in, in Hebrews, after you've been obedient to this step, this mm-hmm. instruction, I will fulfill the promise that will reinforce the goodness of that promise, mm-hmm. the fantastic result of that promise. And by the way, as you learn it, and this is, you know, as, as people are learning it for the first time, it is a little bit difficult because they've never learned how mm-hmm. to do this. But as you do it, and that's why I, I help people walk alongside of them and say, no, stay in there. Yep, there's mm-hmm. a step. Take that step. It'll work out. Trust it. Uh, I'll fulfill it. And when you see it, you say, wow, look at that. It's mm-hmm. true. Guess what? Right. Tomorrow, the next week, eh, you got another instruction. But mm-hmm. it's a little bit easier. Uh, and you and right. I, you and I now are at a point where... Um, there's, there's some things that don't make sense and we have to process that. Uh, but mm-hmm. if we get a clear instruction, we right. have so learned Hebrews 10. Just follow. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to get the promise. Um, yeah. uh, I was working with a guy who's, uh, uh, he was, uh, uh, a CEO and he uh, actually had gotten terminated and was now looking for a new position. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and he was okay with it. You know, he was, he was, you know, in, in essence, trusting God and okay, you're going to lead me to something new. And I believe that. And uh, so we were looking at, okay, how do we determine God's will? Uh, and it's specific. If you look at it from his perspective is what company do you want me to go to work for? Mm-hmm. Pretty simple. Um, now our desire would be what? Just tell me the company. Just tell me. <laughs> Just tell Let me, me know. And make it happen. You know? um, <laughs> and he said, well, okay, let's go into a process. Are you going to, do you have a heart to follow my will? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, and, and I was helping them. Uh, and so I said, well, why don't you and your wife uh, write down the things that are important to you mm-hmm. as you go forward that you know are true for you that God will reinforce and confirm. Uh, and so that, and I said, talk about a little bit about the kind of company, uh, the work that you'd you'd be liking liking to, uh, what would be thrilling for you, what's important for you and your family, uh, et cetera. And he was he happened to be a young CEO that had two young kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they did, and they put this list together. Um, and I read it and said, okay, this is cool. Uh, I said, I noticed one thing on here that's kind of be kind of a, an important, uh, probably a very strong criteria that you'll know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you said that you can have a job that can't travel more than two nights every other week, three mm-hmm. days and two nights. Um, I said, do you and your wife confirm that? Yes. I said, why? I said, why? Mm-hmm. Well, because um, our, we know that part of our covenant life is to enjoy our children. Right. And I can't be absent from that. Uh, so, and I want to join my wife and I want to join my kids and the family dynamic is important and the job can't be super, you know, to that. Okay. I said, do you believe it? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, then let's use that to help evaluate opportunities. <laughs> so mm-hmm. literally within a few days, he gets an offer that is twice as much money as he's ever made in his life. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Travel five nights a week. Mm. What do you think he says? Uh, well, this could be God's will. 
because look at the money that we're going to make and I'm getting right. a new job and I'm looking for a Doesn't new job. Doesn't this look good on the surface? And yeah. uh, look at all the money I can use to tie, you know, all these, all these great mm -hmm. uh, explanations. Um, and uh, I think this is God's answer. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is where people are looking at circumstances mm -hmm. as a primary way. And, and interesting enough, um, <laughs> the way I interpret it as I see it, circumstances is, is kind of related financially. That, mm -hmm. that kind of tends to rise to the top is financially, what does this mean? Now, it's right. got to be God's will. So I looked at him. I said, well, wait a second. Um, you had written, you and your wife had written that two nights every other week. This mm -hmm. doesn't fit that at all. I said, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. He said, what do you mean the answer is no? I said, God's already given you a I've truth. i already told him that, yeah. And I'm going to fulfill it if you are faithful to what I just told you. Mm -hmm. uh, and you and your wife have, conf I thought you and your wife confirmed that. Yes. Well, then why would you say maybe this is God's will? The answer is absolutely not because he already told you what's mm -hmm. true. Well, I don't know about that. You know, and so he processed and struggled with it. Um, and I said, well, you and your wife process it and see if God doesn't confirm that you have not yet received the promise. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, great examples in scripture, <laughs> Sarah and Abraham. <laughs> Right, right. We haven't got the promise. Hey, how about if we satisfy this? We go this, make it happen. We go make it happen with uh, Hagar and Ishmael. Mm. Uh, they said it's a good idea. By the way, this is important. Uh, they, they decided that we're going to do this to mm -hmm. fulfill what we think is the promise. Right. Did God stop them? No. No. He let them do it. No. See, and by the way, was God's will fulfilled? No, because afterwards no. he said... That ain't the promise. Right. Matter and now fact, he can restore that, but there's some consequences in the middle of all that. That's right. And by the way, you're going to have to cast him out mm -hmm. uh, because he's not the promise. Um, I can still deliver to you the promise. And, and this is important as we look at God's will is he didn't say, I'm going to prevent you from making a mistake. Mm -hmm. No. Do you have a heart to follow me? And see, they decided at the moment, no, we're not going to follow you. We're going to do it ourselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the mistake they made? Even with the thought, did they go back to God and say, we're thinking of this, and maybe we're going to try to fulfill it this way. Could you, what do you got to say about that today? Mm -hmm. Don't throw away the opportunity to go into the throne room. They didn't go. Right. And God said, well, you didn't come in. You didn't talk to me. You didn't ask me. So, okay. Uh, he has a consequence. So this couple is struggling. They go back and they confirm it. Uh, and they said, you know what? Uh, we, did, we did understand that. The promise, this isn't the promise. Uh, we haven't received it yet. It's all based upon some important things. We are going to be obedient to that instruction. And I'm not going to accept this job. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to wait. Do you feel confident about that? Yes, did. What do you know is going to happen? God's going to deliver the promise. When? After I fulfill my commitment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he, he does. He and his wife do say no. We're committed. That's the way we're going to go. Three weeks later, they get a phone call. Hey, would you like to come and work uh, for our company? You know, yeah, and they looks at it. And, and uh, I said, you know, what's the deal? Two nights, travel two nights every other week. Mm -hmm. and, That's he said, beautiful. and he says, guess what? They're providing me the same money the first one was, double I've ever made in my entire life. Wow. And, 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 and then I, and I followed up with them afterwards that it worked out exactly what God had spoke, uh, mm -hmm. that they've enjoyed the fullness of all the blessing of the covenant. Right. Uh, not just materially, but the joy of a marriage, the joy of a family that has dad at home. Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, him learning to have balance and not, not get sucked into work. There's all kinds of things to it. But after they, they were obedient to the instruction, did God's will in that regard, right. God gave them the promise. Uh, and, and you illustrate it with your discussion. So as we try to, you know, we're going to end uh, today on, uh, as we're talking about the summary of this, but uh, we've learned a couple important things is that 
God is going to speak. I have a will. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going. I am going to deliver certain things for you. I'm going to give you certain things. I'm going to uh, show you the truth of this. I'm going to give you instruction. Don't waste your opportunity to come and talk to me about it. Right. Let me have clarity. Uh, we'll talk uh, uh, tomorrow a little bit more about clarity because uh, because I oh, as, as we can see is like okay well how how do we get clarity. Uh, about, and I think people struggle with clarity. Yeah. How do, yeah. how do we get clarity so we know that we know that we know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, in faith, uh, acting out the truth of what God speaks of our instruction that after we do that, we'll receive the promise. And by the way, we can thwart God's will by not even caring, one. Mm-hmm. Uh, or like Abraham and Sarah, well, let, let us go do our thing. Right. Uh, or like we talked about last time with Joshua, where he said, yeah, I think I'll take AI. Uh, well, then none of that worked out because why? Mm-hmm. It wasn't my will. And God's not up there saying, I'm going to prevent you. I'm stopping you. I'm going to uh, make sure it's no, you're going to have to come with me and process me and take these steps of obedience mm-hmm. like you did with tithing. Right. We, we, we believed it. We didn't receive the blessing until after we took the step. Mm-hmm. So it's a beautiful thing uh, by faith. So uh, we'll end there uh, today and we'll keep, we'll, we're going to go into, as we summarize this week, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, clarity, the, the steps to take, what are some of the practical things we can do. And uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll finish the series off this week. So we'll be fun. Excellent. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks so much for joining. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Thanks so much. For Kathy, joining this, this, uh, this whole series is choking you up. It's, it's just, it it's is, overwhelming. Right? <laughs> uh, it really is a joy though, to be doing this. And I think, I hope everyone is enjoying, um, as we do wrap up this series, this series, there's such good truth in it. So I appreciate you sharing it with us. And um, if, if you have enjoyed this and learned a lot from it, absolutely be a friend, tell a friend, invite them to the podcast. Um, and um, we just love to journey this with you. And again, just a reminder, if you have questions um, and you want to send them in, send them to questions at afjministry.com and um, let us help you process that and just uh, practice putting these things that we have, we've been teaching for so long now, put them into practice and Um, So thanks again. Have a wonderful day. As always, Rich, we appreciate your wisdom and pouring out. That's fun. Thanks, Kathy. Have a good uh, day and we'll see you tomorrow. Sounds good. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.